gift of prophecy. When I was eight years of age, a gypsy took my hands, turned them over and gasped. You're going to be very famous, she said. You will be able to foresee worldwide events because you are blessed with the gift of prophecy, the gift of visions of things to come. I remember that even as a child I had such visions. It was some time before I realized that even though God has a divine plan for each and every one of us, he had not blessed everyone with the same gift of foreseeing events. Visions are not a form of psychic phenomena. They come directly from the Supreme Being in his own good time, not ours. I wish I could fully describe to you how I feel when a vision is revealed to me. I am bathed in a warm, soft light. There is a peacefulness and a feeling of love that permeates my entire being. I stand alone, completely apart from everything earthly. I am calm, yet receptive, waiting for what is to be revealed. Let me recount for you one of my visions that has aroused a great deal of discussion. The assassination of President Kennedy. This was a vision, not a psychic experience. The vision of President Kennedy was given to me while I was in prayer at St. Matthew's Cathedral in Washington, D.C. on August the 18th, 1952, more than a decade before the tragedy. I was blessed with this vision, showing me the White House with a very thick and heavy black cloud ponderously hanging over it, then draping itself slowly but surely around it. The number 1960 was prominently displayed in this detailed vision, showing me that the man to be sworn in as president would be a youthful Democrat with blue eyes, and he would be assassinated. I knew this vision was revealed to tell the world its purpose yet unknown. Three weeks before the assassination, I was shown the last name of the assassin. On the Sunday preceding that fatal Friday, the ominous cloud started to descend upon the White House. I was being shown that the time was drawing near. I searched in my mind for someone who would convey to him the danger he was in, someone he would take seriously. This would not be easy, because in public life, as we all realize, one cannot listen to every warning. My duty was clear. I must get word to the president through an old friend of the Kennedy family whom I knew. I appealed to her to persuade the president to give up his plans for his trip to the Southwest. The trip had not been announced as yet, so her first response was, what trip? The days before that Friday, I spoke to everyone I met about the only thing I had on my mind. I could think and speak of nothing else. Friday morning, I told Inspector Charles Bender, this is the day 